Is it distracting that you can see the screen in my glasses? A little bit. All right, so to be honest, there's not really anything new in this video. We're doing significance tests for two means. We pretty much did this in the last video. We talked about sampling distributions of two means. And at the end of the problem, I said, is this likely to happen by chance? And we were doing a significance test, even though we didn't call it a significance test. So I think you'll be able to do this entire problem on your own. Um, I want you to pause the video, read it, and then see how much you can get through on your own. If you get to a part where you're stuck, you have two choices. You can either hit play and do the problem along with me, or you can skip it, try to do the rest of the problem, and then hit play and see where you went wrong. I think you'll get a lot more out of this problem if you try to do it by yourself, as opposed to just letting the video play and like doing it along with me. So give it an honest effort, try it on your own, and then hit play when you're ready to check your answer. So I started by just jotting some things down. Um, I don't like hunting through the problem to find all the information, so I just wrote them down here. And then they're asking us if the mean number of calories with the labeled menu is less than the mean number of calories with the unlabeled menu. So I wrote that out here, and then I translated that into a difference. So I moved mu u, so we're wondering if the difference is less than zero or negative. So in our state step, the null is that everything's normal. There's no difference between the two restaurants. Mu l minus mu u equals zero, and we are curious if that difference is actually less than zero. Um, of course, we need to state what those are. So where mu l is the true mean calorie count per receipt, at a Starbucks with the labeled menu, exact same for you. And then we're gonna test at 0.05. For the plan step, same three conditions as always. Both the samples were random, it said that in the problem. Both sample sizes were greater than or equal to 30, so the sampling distribution of the difference of those X bars is approximately normal by the CLT. Now if those sample sizes were small, we would need to see the data and check to make sure there was no skewness or outliers. Luckily, they're both over 30, so we're fine. And then we can assume there are more than 300 and 400 receipts at those two Starbucks. So notice I am checking the conditions for both samples, both Starbucks. All right, so we're gonna do a two sample T test. We have two different samples. We don't know the true standard deviation of either population, which means we have to do a T test, not a Z test. And then you can see the start of my distribution over here. With any significance test, we're assuming that the null is true, so the center of our distribution is zero. And then I'm calculating the standard error because I don't know the true standard deviation of the populations. So I'm using 175. Those are the numbers, right? Yeah, 175. And this is just straight from the formula sheet. I get 21.77 for the standard error. Okay, now that we have sufficiently planned, it's time to do the problem. I've written out the formula, um, and then here it is with everything plugged in. Now I haven't mentioned this yet, but I do want to point out, even though it seems silly to write minus zero, I would write minus zero. If you do this work and you write 225 minus 265, you know, that's, that's the statistic, and then you don't write minus zero, Someone who's grading your work might think that this is the statistic and this is the parameter. Which is obviously not what you meant, but if you put a minus zero here, then the grader's like, oh, okay, that's their statistic. Oh, that didn't work. And then this over here is the parameter. So just a heads up, I would include the minus zero. So we get a T value of negative 1.84. So that seems like it might be good evidence against the null. That's somewhere over here. We were interested in less than, so we want that area to the left. I'm using TCDF. Degree of freedom, I used 29, because that's the smaller degree of freedom of the two, 30 and 40. And we get a p-value of 0.038, which is pretty small. So conclusion. The probability of getting this difference in x-bars or something more extreme, if the null were true, is 0.038. As always, remember that this statement is really important. You have to clarify that it's the probability if the null were true. And make sure that you're also saying something more extreme as well, because we're interested in anything at our x-bar or less. This is smaller than 0.05, so we reject the null, conclude that the difference in means is less than zero. 
Okay, now, so far I have not given any context. If I stopped there, this answer would not get full points because who knows what I'm talking about? At no point have I mentioned the context of the problem. So I added a second like part of my conclusion where I explain what that means. So the mean number of calories at restaurants with labels is less than the mean number of calories at restaurants without them. And then one more concluding sentence, the labels seem to help people consume fewer calories. So I'm just taking it one step further and pointing out what that means in terms of the bigger problem. Hopefully not too complicated. Um, like I said, we basically did this in the last video. It's important to just keep an eye on T versus Z, one sample versus two sample, and then whether you're doing a test or an interval. Writing this in your plan step originally probably seemed kind of silly, but as you can see now, it is really important because we have one and two samples. We could have Z or T, and we could be doing tests or intervals. It's a nice way to make sure you're doing the right thing in your problem. Do I have one or two samples? Do I use Z or T? Am I even doing an interval or am I doing a test? It's a nice way to check that you're doing it right.